So when KEF introduced us to the LS50 wireless, they made it comparatively a lot more costly to get the same feature set and sound quality from a system built around the passive version of this speaker, the LS50. Similarly, when ELAC brought out this, the Navis ARB51 stand mount, they made it comparatively more costly to get the same feature set and sound quality from a system built around the passive Unify series with the coaxial here and the bass driver here. So for example, I could add this Hegel H190 amplifier to this pair of Unify UB5 passives and we would get network streaming, we would get actually slightly better sound quality than the Navis that we just saw, we would get slightly richer tonality, but this amp sells for something like 3600 euros. So factor in these and then some decent speaker cable and we're at twice the asking price of the Navis. Now of course there are more affordable integrated amps with inbuilt streaming on the market, but I haven't really heard one that when paired with this can match the performance of the Navis. Now that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And if you have a suggestion, then please let us know in the comments below, but please be specific. So tell us which amp or which amp and then which streamer and which cables, because trying to build a passive loudspeaker system is, it's not easy, it, it, it can be complicated, especially for the newcomer. So this is why generally, if somebody's looking to spend 2,000 euros, 3,000 euros, I tell them generally to start with a pair of actives because actives give us, in the main, better value for money than do passive systems, in the main, through my experience. But what I wanted to know was, are actives like this Key 3 still king of the castle when we're talking about higher price points? Because these, plus their stands, plus the key remote, are almost 15 grand, that's euros. And then we have to add a streamer to this remote. So I've added the Blue Sound Node 2. So that takes us exactly to 15,000 euros. So this is a very high end active loudspeaker system. I've reviewed this before and I wondered if we spent the same kind of money on a passive loudspeaker system, could we equal the Key 3's performance? So when Hegel sent me their H390 integrated amplifier with built-in streaming, I thought I could build a passive loudspeaker system around that and by adding the KEF reference one and then factoring in an extra 400 euros for AudioQuest loudspeaker cable that I use, the total comes to exactly 15 grand. So active 15 grand, passive 15 grand. And they both do streaming. I mean, the streaming is built into the Hegel. I'm running a beta version of their Rune Ready code right now but it also does AirPlay, Spotify Connect. And power-wise, it gives us 250 watts per channel into eight ohms, which is perfect for a speaker like this, this KEF. Now, as I have three Hegel amplifiers here, it would be remiss of me not to just quickly mention that even though that the 390, so the middle of the range, the new one, even though that's closer in price to the 190, to the white one, it's actually closer in out and out performance to the 590, the big expensive one. And that isn't just because the 390 is closer in watts per channel to the 590, but also because the 390 apparently has a newer version of the streaming board that Hegel have designed. I think the DAC design is also slightly different. So really the 390 for me is the sweet spot in this 
Eagle range of three here. All right, so on this KEF reference one, we have a one inch aluminium tweeter with the tangerine sliced waveguide here. And then that's coaxially, that is coaxially mounted inside a five inch aluminium mid-range driver. And then beneath that, a separate base driver, six and a half inch also aluminium. I know some of you Americans say aluminum. It's aluminium. Sorry. Mind you, that's, that's the guy that says router. I say router, so, well, swings and roundabouts. This speaker is 85 dB efficient. It's eight ohm nominal and the Hegel behind me won't see anything apparently less than 3.2 ohms. That's according to Kef's own specs. So anybody that's been to a trade show, an audio trade show, in the last couple of years will have seen that Hegel are now showing mostly with Kef. So that's a good start in knowing this is gonna be a good pairing. But obviously the Hegel amp, it's an amplifier. It's designed for many, many different passive speakers. It's like a, a one size fits all solution. Whereas with the key, we don't have to worry about mixing and matching. With the key speaker, we've got tweeter, bass driver here on the front, but we also have a driver on each side. We have two on the back. So six drivers in total, each powered by Hypex class D modules. So six amplifiers, six DACs. And preceding that is the crossover done in the digital domain. So with an active speaker, the crossover comes before the amplification stage. Whereas with the KEF, it's a passive crossover. So made up of passive components like capacitors, inductors, and resistors. That's obviously in the, in the back of the speaker, just behind the binding posts. And that comes after the amplifier, which is over there. Now you can see behind me here that the key are taller, so physically more imposing. And they can also go back closer to the wall they can more than the KEF can. The KEF demands more wall clearance. And that's probably because of the cardioid dispersion of the key. They don't throw out as much low frequency energy as do the KEF because of their DSP crossover and the way that's designed. You can check the link here, not here, here, to my video review of those key from, was it last year? It was last year, last year. Anyway, um, I did not listen to these speakers for weeks on end with them sat side by side like this. This is just here like this for today, for your benefit. So when I listened to both of them, obviously I took one pair out, listened for a couple of weeks, then swapped them out, listened for another couple of weeks. And I listened to music like Supergrass, Mojave 3, Jack, Orang. I need to tell you about Orang. Orang is a side project from the two other guys from Talk Talk who are not Mark Hollis. And they've made two albums in the 90s which are kind of sort of fairly abstract instrumentals. I think the second one was a bit more world music-y. I recommend it, very good, very interesting, pretty well recorded. Um, you should definitely check it out. I know a lot of audiophiles love Talk Talk for Laughing Stock and Spirit of Eden. And the first Orang album is very similar to Laughing Stock in its style, in its instrumentation. Anyway, so back to our passive active speaker standoff. Now the first fundamental difference between these two loudspeaker systems is in the low end. The key is much tighter, it's much cleaner, whereas with the KEF you can hear it sometimes meet the room so I've got a 35 hertz mode in this room. That's mathematically unavoidable. The KEF sometimes find it, or find it more obviously than do the key, because again, cardioid dispersion 
means that we, yeah, we get this sort of less relaxed, less rotund base. It's more muscular. Whereas, you know, it sounds bigger on the kef with the Hegel, um, but that's really, I think it's a little bit looser in that regard. But if we go to the other end of the frequency spectrum, we notice and quite immediately actually that the key have a more insistent top end. It sort of pops out a lot more than it does on the kef Hegel combination. So that means we get, well, I th actually, no, I think the key is better with player outlines. Um, they're about the same when it comes to detail retrieval, but the fundamental difference is this, is that the detail with the key, imagine it's a car, right? The detail rides on the bonnet, on the hood if you're American. Whereas with the Kef, it's a bit more laid back. It sits, sits in the front seat. So it's the same thing, but just a different presentation of the same thing. But I'd also say, and I know all I've heard this just now because we did a quick demo so we could hear, hear what I was talking about, is that the Kef push a wider soundstage than the key do. And because of the key's greater treble air bite, it contrasts the Kef Hegel system as smoother, especially smoother actually, and richer, and just we get a greater sense of refinement from the Kef and the Hegel amp than we do the key system. So I've been playing this album a lot recently, Special Requests, Fabric Mix, and this is full of a lot of very hard hitting drum and bass, electronica, and those low frequencies are very well served by either of these uh, speaker systems here. But you should know that this Kef passive speaker absolutely wipes the floor with the LS50 wireless when it comes to low frequency reproduction um, in terms of mid-range clarity, in terms of, yeah, that smooth top end. The smooth top end in this thing with the Hegel amp is really quite something. So if you're thinking, well, you know, my active Kef LS50 wireless is gonna be better than this, no, uh, no, it's not, not even close. Both of these loudspeaker systems are expensive. They're high end. This is why this is a high end audio channel. Sometimes we do expensive stuff. Sometimes we do affordable stuff. Today we're doing expensive stuff. Now, both of these are, you know, really up there when it comes to performance, feature set, but there is a fundamental difference between the two. The key really put me on the edge of my seat when I'm listening because they're so exciting to listen to and so engaging. The Kef system with the Hegel amp is a different deal. It allows me to recline more, to sit back and relax more into music. So really, when you're trying to decide between these two or between, between these kinds of things, you have to decide whether you're an edge of the seat listener or a reclining kind of listener. Now, I, when I was playing these before for Olaf, he cheekily <laughs> described the Kef system as, it's more musical, isn't it? Yeah, musical, no, we don't use that word in this house, never. It doesn't mean anything, it just means I like something. Anyway, so which one of these do I like? Well, I think I'm gonna give it to the Kef Hegel system on this one. I like to sit back and listen to really enjoy the majesty, even though there is the compromised bass with the room. If you have a smaller room or you have a difficult room, the key really are what you should go for. But it's again, it's about what you like. I have described the differences between these two systems and then you have to decide which one sounds like it could be for you. I gotta say I was really surprised by the result of this little investigation because when I started I thought mm, 
as good as the Kef and the Hegel are, they're not going to compete with the key and its cardioid dispersion, no way. But they absolutely do. And for many people, they will be the preferred choice. And I think it's very interesting that passive loudspeakers are very much still in the game, especially at these higher price points. I still think at the entry level, actives rule the roost in terms of value for money. But as we move higher, as we've seen in recent weeks with my Klipsch Forte 3 video, there's still life in those old dogs yet. Where I think the sort of futurefy aspect of passive audio systems comes into play is with the amplifier itself, like the Hegel. It has streaming and DAC built in. So it's not like we don't need, like, I mean, I've got an enormous new hi-fi rack here. I don't need all of that for this Kef Hegel system. I mean, I have this big rack because of my job, but you could easily put the Hegel on a sideboard like I have with my projector on it or on a little side table. Well, it needs to be quite a strong side table because that amp is pretty big and heavy. But anyway, it's an all in one, just add loudspeakers. I think that's where the future of amplifiers is going. So sort of the coalescing of everything in one box. If you want to hear the music that I use for this review and that I've mentioned in this video, open the description box below. You'll find links for Tidal, for Spotify and for Cobas. Three different playlists there that feature the music that I've listened to. Not the music in the video itself. That's a different deal. That's just used for soundtracking this. I have copyright clearance for that. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below. And if you like my attitude towards high-end audio, passive speakers, active speakers, then please subscribe to this channel. Und vielen Dank fürs Anschauen. How do you say vielen Dank for watching? For, for, zu sehen? For anzusehen? Mm -hmm. For anzusehen? Fürs Anschauen.